Welcome to r slash Today I Effed Up, where we have the most epic Today I Effed Up story I have ever read. I mean, seriously, this post has more plot twists than an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Our first post is from Tawei. Now, this post is kind of a roller coaster. The first post got deleted, and I had to track it down in the Wayback Machine, which is why the first post is in day mode and the second post is in night mode. This happened an hour ago, and I'm still shaking in fear about how my life will turn out from now on. There's two situations that lead to the conclusion of the screw up. The first situation. I asked my sister-in-law to borrow her 360 degree pocket camera for a trip my wife and I are soon vacationing to. I found out the memory card still had content. Her husband travels a lot and she made a one hour POV style 360 degree erotic video, which I assume she sent to him a while back. I've had the hots for her for the past eight plus years. Before she and I got married, there were several times sexual tensions arose between the two of us. Living together for a year as strictly roommates, movies, dinners, getting drunk while watching movies, just the two of us, breakfasts, etc. A certain trust or test was implemented and nothing ever happened between the two of us. As at the time, I was dating my now wife, which was working at a distance. But man, if at the time she had just touched my hand once back then, I think I would have lived a whole different life. So finding this video, I thought I struck gold. I could have what I've always fantasized about, gifting my past self while living my happy current life. The second situation. I have an automated house that lights up the house with geolocation. Before the app worked with Apple HomeKit, a third-party app needed to be downloaded which tracks your family and friends. The free version only allows you to add one person, so I added my wife. My wife and I have had this app for three years now, even if it's useless after an app update a couple of years back to the original app. We never deleted it since it was so useful for tracking each other using notifications. I get a notification when she's at work and when I arrive at work. We also both get notifications when one arrives home. It's good for times where she does groceries, for example, and I get a notification to prompt me to go out and help her out. Or when I work late and finally leave the office, prompting her to set up the dinner table. Last night, she fell asleep without charging her phone. I hate when she does that. Today, she went to work with barely any battery. What if she needs to call the police or a hospital for an emergency? I have the day off today. Today was the day I do the deed. I don't only go with simple 360 degree video, but literally set it up on my VR headset in bed with AirPods on. The whole experience. This would have lasted me five minutes tops, but the foreplay she does is long and boring. Then the action starts and I go on. My wife's phone didn't give a notification as she arrived because of her now dead phone. She comes to the bedroom and sees me unleashing the Kraken in bed with VR goggles on. She knows I release the Kraken occasionally, but never saw me do it. I sneak it in here and there. But VR videos was never discussed, as in, is it cheating if I do it? You know the conversation I'm talking about. Is it cheating if you have a sex doll? Is it cheating if it's a robot? Is it cheating if you do this thing that I'm not going to say on YouTube? It was the type of conversation we'd have at the very start of our relationship when we were still friends 10 years ago to see how far one would take it. Weird, I know, but let's say it was one of those pregame conversations to see if we're on the same page before things started getting serious. Pre-game conversations were not only about sex, by the way. Anyways, VR didn't exist back then, so it was never discussed. So I never knew if it was right or wrong for me to do it. I guess it was wrong since she rushed in and ripped the goggles from my face. That's when I see her in the room. The F, she says. Then she looks inside. Is that my sister? I'm screwed. She still had her shoes on from arriving. She just grabbed her bag with the VR headset and left the house. Looking at the tracking app, she's at her parents' house, which are neighbors of the sister-in-law. 
I'm screwed. Then the next day we get this update. So basically this is what happened tonight. Once my wife arrived at her parents' house, that's when I received a notification that her phone was back on and charging. Some people asked about the app. It's called Life360. It also gives battery percentage notifications when it runs low or when the phone is back on. I was already typing the long story on Reddit when suddenly the notification appeared, which I checked at the last minute and wrote she was at her parents' house before posting. So basically, after posting, after feeling a bit better by telling someone and having a bit of weight off my shoulders, I was pacing around the apartment while trying to give her calls after calls, but it kept saying her phone was busy. This went on for 45 minutes or forever. I couldn't focus on the time. All of a sudden, the sister-in-law calls. I ignored. I was way too scared to face this. She called five times in a row while I just watched it ringing. Then she gave up. Then just a text saying, call me. I left the apartment and decided to go watch a movie at the theater. Needed to get distracted, which didn't help as I didn't focus once on Detective Pikachu. I received a call from my wife during the movie, but I ignored it. She knows I have an Apple Watch and I receive all notifications, so she knows I was ignoring. She only called once. Sister-in-law called three more times during the movie. I left the theater and decided to go back home. On the drive back, I received a notification that she arrived home. Now, I was petrified. But my out-of-body experience just told me, F it, suck it up, just get it over with. I arrived home and was getting ready for the poo storm that was about to happen. That out-of-body experience came back really quickly to reality as I got to the door and then had that fear again. I know she got the notification I was back. I get in the house and both wife and sister-in-law are in the living room on the couch. I didn't say anything. I wanted one of them to speak first. What if I said sorry, but there was nothing to be sorry about? At this point, I was trying to gauge the mood. I'm not one for confrontations or leading conversations. I'm very introverted. But I know I should be the first to say sorry, but didn't know how. My wife then says, I spoke to sister-in-law about what happened. She knows. I am so effed up in the head. Out of reflex, I say, knows what? She says, don't lie, the video. I was flushed red, I'm sure. My heart was beating so fast. Then my wife said she deleted the video. This is when I apologized to both of them so very, very much almost crying. I saw all the Reddit comments about divorce and all, and I was really upset at myself, but deserved it. But I didn't, but I did, but I didn't. Then my sister-in-law speaks. She says, you do understand this video wasn't for you. Then she goes on for 10 minutes to tell me what I already know. I was wrong. I kept nodding. But then the drama comes out that effed with me. She said that it wasn't for her husband either. He's been constantly traveling to Bulgaria voluntarily at any chance he could for work. But also through the years, he's been having an affair with a colleague there who works at the branch. She knew about it for a while and let it slide as he was still providing for sister-in-law. But the money became less and less. My wife knew about this too, as she and her sister are so close. But the info was kept within the family to avoid dishonor. This is a big Eastern mentality to have, and it's not the first time family info was kept secret from me. But now they told me because of the circumstance. I was told not to apologize or speak to her husband, as he does not know about the video. My sister-in-law is seeing someone else. Her husband and her both live as roommates for now. The divorce word can never be spoken, but she's found someone long distance and that video was for him. The reason for all of the calls from the sister-in-law was to not mention anything to her husband. The sister-in-law feared that if I did, the video would have been proof during the divorce process as if she was at fault. 
It was a very emotional afternoon. I felt like throwing up many times. The focus was more on sister-in-law and her life though, and her shame for having kept her relationship going as long as it has. The guy is barely leaving any money on the side for her anymore, so she's been sleeping more and more at her parents' house. Me obtaining the video didn't come up more than once. I don't know if it was because it was too embarrassing for everyone or what, but it will come up another day for sure. Maybe after everyone has relaxed and tears have dried, I'll have an honest conversation with my wife about my wrongdoings and also include if VR videos are fine or not. For tonight, my wife invited my sister-in-law to stay and sleep over. We got some food and drank a few bottles of wine to make us forget a bit, although it felt insanely awkward. Sister-in-law seemed to be feeling better. She was smiling and laughing and slapping my shoulder or kicking me under the table every time I made a joke. She seemed more open with me now that I was one of the people to know her secret and she could trust and talk to me if she needs to. All three of us fell asleep in sleeping bags in the living room, kind of like camping to keep her company during this tough time for her. My wife seemed okay for now too. Then OP posts an update, but it isn't OP. It's OP's wife logged in to OP's account. This is his now ex-wife. Did he not realize, or was he too dumb to remember, we share everything, including the same Reddit app? I logged in to see this throwaway as the default login account. I took a look through the comments and was seriously disgusted by most of the responses suggesting to sexually approach both of us last night. And my sister did mention he tried something in the middle of the night once. This guy is living in another world. I am only posting this to reassure everyone thinking he got away with it, that these types of scumbags do not. I came home yesterday with my sister to pack my stuff. I saw his update saying it seemed alright, but I was keeping it in for the next morning. The reason we slept in the living room is because I didn't want him to see my bags in the corner of the bedroom. He came home suddenly before I finished packing. It wasn't fun camping or a picnic. This morning, before he woke up, we grabbed the rest of my stuff and left. I went to the bank and froze our joint account before he irresponsibly starts taking cash out. I am not seeing him anymore. I'm gonna lawyer up, give away all this Reddit gold to the comments that I feel were actually reasonable, and divorce him. Oh, and husband, if you can read this, I've deleted the tracking app. My lawyer will call you to unfreeze your share and take the steps to unlink me from any other tracking apps you might have on me. It's worth mentioning that as of reading this story, this post has 110,000 upvotes, 10 Reddit Platinums, 30 Reddit Golds, and 66 Reddit Silvers. And on top of that, all the views from this YouTube video. <laughs> this is the most exposed a cheater has ever been on Reddit, but not the most exposed a cheater has ever been on YouTube unless OP happens to be named Pro Jared. Our next post is from Waifless. I was at a UK airport and as a perk of my job, I had a business class ticket to fly to Brazil. I'd never flown first class before and felt pretty giddy and excited. I mean, why wouldn't I? I was going to Brazil for three weeks for a business class in a five-star hotel I hadn't had to pay for. To make it even better, as it was technically a business trip, I was getting paid to be there. I'm heading to the departure gate and I ended up on one of those long escalators. You know the kind they have in airports that you silently note to yourself, hey, that's a big escalator. I'm going down, got my backpack on, my headphones in, and I'm in a good mood. Such a good mood, I decide to jump the last few steps just because I'm a little giddy thinking about all those Brazilian girls. Some sunshine, some cheap booze, and absolutely no stuffy office and intolerable moody coworkers. So I jump, hit the plate at the bottom, and the freaking thing locks up and makes a high-pitched noise. It doesn't gradually come to a stop, it just stops. It's a busy airport, it's a busy escalator too. I turn around and see people tumbling down this thing, crashing into people and more people falling. 
an alarm goes off and people in uniforms come running out shouting into walkie-talkies. I try my absolute best to disappear into the crowd, another shocked bystander wondering what's going on. I see a lady bleeding from her nose, a man with a probably broken arm, kids crying, and I know it's my fault. I feel horrible, but not just horrible, worried. Worried I won't be going anywhere. What will work say? I head to the departure gate and board my flight without issue. The business class is severely tainted. I spend the whole trip worried I'll be arrested at the other end. Every possible scenario goes through my head. I got off scot-free, but I'm still feeling bad about it, so I thought I'd come and tell all of you about it so you can judge me instead. Well, I mean, if OP wants us to judge him, let's all call this guy a jerk down in the comments. That was r slash today I effed up, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe because I want to hit 1 million subs and you can help me get there.